Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video blog. I can't wait to tell you about this study that was done recently um, around 2019. You know, given the importance of relationships and how being married or in a partnership or having a boyfriend or girlfriend, a long-term uh, relationship like that, given how important that is, it's interesting that we haven't really turned to science <laughs> for some help. You know, we kind of count on our gut reaction to someone. Part of the reason that's true is that there hasn't been any science to access. The studies that were done up until recently were very small, and the results, the conclusions that they came to in these studies are often conflicting. Until along came a woman named Samantha Joel, and Samantha decided to do something very collaborative, how feminine of her, using this feminine principle of collaboration. So she didn't go out and establish this big, huge study of her own. She decided to collaborate with other scientists and to um, pull data that was already in existence together in a way that would um, maybe give some answers to this question of can we do better <laughs> at finding a good romantic partner for ourselves. Okay, so she pulled this data together from 85 scientists who had done 43 studies involving 11,196 people. That's a big study. Nothing like that had ever been done before. And she had information. I'm, I'm going to read you a list. Um, she had information on demographics, which means age, education, income, and race. She had that kind of information about people. She had information about physical appearance. Was that person considered attractive by others? Um, sexual tastes. What kind of sex did they like? How often? She had data about interests and hobbies, about mental and physical health values, which included politics, relationships, what's important about a relationship, and child rearing, and a lot more. But that's just a little sample of what she had. So um, she went to work on this and pulled all this information together. And when she got it together, she scheduled a talk to announce the results at the University of Waterloo in Canada. And the name of her talk, I'm gonna get this right, can we help people pick better romantic partners? Can we help people pick better romantic partners? So after all that, <laughs> all that time, all that energy, do you know what the answer to that question? Can we help people pick better partners? The answer is no. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that answer more than I can tell you. More than I can tell you. Um, the, the most surprising result is that relationships seem unpredictable. That's, that's what she came to the conclusion for. Uh, that's the conclusion that was that came about from that study. So apparently, artificial intelligence was not it was as clueless as we are anyway. So one might consider that a disappointing result, but it wasn't because they found out things that they could never have predicted. Um, for one, the variable, uh, what they found out was that the variables that actually help determine whether a relationship is going to be a happy one, the variables they found are counterintuitive. You know, on most on most dating sites, the what, what data can predict is um, what people think is important and how long. It, you know, whether they're going to swipe right or left on a dating app, and it, it, they can also predict how quickly someone will uh, swipe left or right on a dating app. But what they didn't know is that I want to I want to actually read this because it's it's so key. What they what they found is that good romantic partners are difficult to predict with data desired romantic partners are easy pr to predict with data. 
which suggests that we're dating all wrong. <laughs> what it means is that what we think matters about a partner doesn't. How about them apples? Okay, so it's people, there are really predict, there's a lot of data on the predictability of what people think matters. And some of it is, is you know, height and do they have a sexy <laughs> job and a, a good income? You know, what's their income and do they have a sexy name? I mean, so there, there's data about that. None of that matters. None of it. So there's actually one author had uh, said that race and ethnicity doesn't matter. Religious affiliation actually isn't a predictor of success. I have to take a drink of water. Height, you know, we always like tall people. It doesn't matter. Height doesn't matter. Occupation doesn't matter. Physical attraction doesn't predict a better relationship. Previous marital status doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't you love that? So just keep that in mind, it doesn't matter. Sexual tastes don't matter and similarity to oneself is not a predictor. Those are irrelevant, irrelevant. This is the part I love, another part that I love. What they found is that what does matter is whether you're happy before you met someone. That's what matters. Are you a happy person? Are you depressed? Then if you're depressed before you meet someone, um, it's not going to help you. So, and if you are happy with yourself before you meet someone, it is, that's, that predicts, how do you say this? It's you're four times as likely to have things work out if you're happy with yourself before you meet someone. <laughs> How cool, how cool. So um, overall, what this data suggests is that we get sort of hoodwinked by really shiny stuff, by attention grabbing, oh my gosh, she has a great occupation or she has a great occupation or doesn't she have a sexy name or, you know, we get uh, great hair, physical body, none of it matters. So we get sidetracked by that and we choose people to date based on things that actually don't pan out in the end. So my dear people, <laughs> we don't find a good partner. The way to date is to learn how to be happy, be a good partner. That's what matters. Okay. Have a great week or great weekend. Thank you for listening. I'll put contact information after this if you if I can be of assistance at all with your relationship in any way please please be in touch please reach out. Thank you so much.